After reaching the pinnacle of success with his debut single, Hustlin', which changed the course of his music career and later went platinum, followed by the success of his debut album, Port of Miami, which reached the top of the Billboard 200 and eventually went platinum. His career continued its progression with the success of his many other albums. He has also been featured in many television and film roles. In addition to his many accomplishments, are his New York Times best-selling books, Rick Ross, The Perfect Day to Boss Up, A Hustler's Guide to Building Your Empire, and the featured book of the day, Rick Ross, Hurricanes, A Memoir. What would you say was the most, the biggest contributing factor? You know, what I would say the most is, it really came from a, a positive spot. I know that's hard to say. But when you're really chasing success, you're really chasing your dream. There's something you've been doing over 20 years. You find yourself up in the studio. Everybody else fell asleep. You still up. What made you want to name it Hurricane? Really, because that's what life is all about. We all pray and wish for the sunny days, but life is, you, you will deal with hurricanes, most definitely. You say on the, uh, on the back of the book, it says, um, there are some storms that you just never see coming. What, what, what were some of those storms? Really just on different levels. I think uh, I've experienced them on different levels, from personal uh, to professional, because I've, I've always pushed the boundaries. to my channel and today's video. If you're new, hi, I'm Leticia Fiora. Thank you for joining. And if you like this video and videos like it, then please like, share, and subscribe so that you receive notification whenever I upload a video. Today, I will be discussing Rick Ross's Hurricane's memoir. In his memoir, Rick Ross talks about his childhood, his relationship with family and friends, the people and things that influenced him most, his rise to stardom in his music career, and the many hurricanes in his life. Okay, so first let's talk about the name. His government name is William Leonard Roberts II. He changed his name to Rick Ross, his professional stage name during the mid 2000s. Um, and there is definitely a story behind the Rick Ross name. You may know uh, about uh, former Kingpin Freeway Ricky Ross who sued the rapper for copyright infringement over the use of his name. Now, while I won't be going into detail about this situation, I will leave a link below uh, to videos that do go into detail. So if you're interested in knowing more about this, then definitely check out those videos. Um, other names that Rick Ross is known for are Rosé, The Boss, Teflon, and Renzel. He was born in Clarksdale, Mississippi on January the 28th, 1976, which makes him 46 years old now. Uh, because his mother was uh, from Mississippi, she wanted to raise him in a small town near family, but shortly afterwards, uh, his parents moved to Hialeah, which is west of Miami. He says his earliest memories are from their second home in Carroll City, Florida, a three bedroom, two bathroom home that they moved into during the spring of 1977. In his book, Rick Ross shares one of his earliest memories 
of seeing two of what he calls junkies from his bedroom window. He said at night he could only make out the flicker of the flame from when they light up their crack. And he makes a very detailed comparison of what the crack smoke looked like, thick, almost blue, as compared to the smoke of his daddy's Benson and Hedges menthol 100 cigarettes. So this sounds like an early relative introduction to the future since Miami is known for selling cocaine and marijuana. Just saying. Throughout the 70s, Miami had become the cocaine capital of America. Cocaine was the choice drug of the rich and the famous, and this time was called the era of the cocaine cowboys. And if you're not familiar with this term, I will be linking a video below that goes into farther detail. Colombians and Cubans were fighting, there were mass murders looting, police brutality, race rioting, and some of everything that you could think of going on. So Miami was a terrible place to be during this time. But even in the midst of all of this chaos, the Roberts family home was a loving environment with delicious home-cooked meals, harmless sibling fights over the remote control, watching favorite TV shows, playing video games, and the sounds of multiple genres of beautiful music heard throughout their home. They lived in what was considered a middle-class neighborhood. Both parents were educated and successful. His mother had a nursing career and worked two jobs, and his father was a college professor and real estate business owner. So in the third grade, Rick Ross says that he was introduced to hip hop when Luke Skywalker's Two Live Crew Is What We Are album was released. And he says that because he was somewhat of a class clown, he ended up getting pulled out of school for singing it in the cafeteria. In the fourth grade, he says uh, he got in trouble for talking back to a teacher and his mother decided to put him in a private school. But when his grades didn't get any better, she ended up taking him back to his old school. And he says that at this point, he had given up on trying to be a good student, but he did just good enough so that he wouldn't be a burden to his mother. His passion for hip hop grew even more when he was introduced to rapper Two Sharks music. He even used his lunch money to buy records based on whether he liked the cover art, which is why Run DMC's Walk This Way was one of his first record purchases, even though he says he didn't even like the song that much. He also says that the first beat that he ever wrote a rap to was to B.B. Jackson's 1984 single, Centipede, um, from the instrumental side. This was his mother's record. Um, and my mom purchased the same record and we played it over and over again. It had a good beat. Okay, so let's get back on the subject. Uh, Rick Ross talks about his music teacher, Ms. Nelly, who encouraged him to write his raps with a theme instead of focusing on making them rhyme. Uh, so he and his friend Bishop came together and they made a song called Where the Hoes At, which was a song about the baddest females at Miami's main black schools. And he said, while Miss Nelly was not a fan of the subject matter, she loved that they took the assignment seriously. So she arranged for them to perform the song at the Just Say No to Drugs event at Carroll City Park. At 10 years old, talking about where the hoes at y'all. But he must've known something because he certainly was determined at this young age 
and fortunate to have a teacher like Miss Nellie who encouraged him and allowed him to shine and display his talents. Unfortunately, by the age of 11, his parents told he and his sister that they were divorcing. My daddy caught a bus, never looking back. Got me standing in the rain, first 50 pack. He said, my father's absence left a void at home. My mama started having to work even more than she already was. And I started spending more time with guys like Booby and Big Mike. The dope boys became my role model figures. Rick Ross talks about his life as a dope boy at Carroll City's Matchbox Housing Projects uh, and eventually venturing out for more money. And he said once he saw all of the money, all of the expensive cars, the jewelry, the mansions, everything that money could buy, that nothing or no one could deter him from it. So he knew what he wanted. He wanted wealth. So yes, he wanted the mansions, he wanted the expensive cars, he wanted the bling, um, he wanted everything that money could buy. And farther into his story, he says, I was a fat, handsome nigga who wanted to be rich. I wanted to have a half million dollar car, a three million dollar house, and I wanted to have a pretty hole in a bikini with me in the jacuzzi. And unlike other Miami rappers, this is what Rick Ross wanted to rap about. Having the finer things in life. Among other things, Rick Ross talks about playing football. And while he wasn't allowed to play youth football because he was overweight, he was able to play in high school. And one of the things he said that he wished he could change the most was seeing his daddy waving at one of his games. He also talks about getting arrested for the first time at 16 years old. And he talks about his college life, playing football at Albany State for one year and then later deciding that college wasn't for him. He eventually caught up with one of his old schoolmates by the name of Earl, who invited him to work out at his recording studio. I was there where Rick Ross says he really began to hone in on his lyrical skills and voice and vocal techniques while working alongside other MCs, producers, and engineers. He also put together his own music group, Triple C's, uh, which included Gunplay himself, and Bishop, his former collaborator of Where the Hoes At. Uh, but he eventually had to replace Bishop with Torch. And together they made a mixtape, uh, they made copies, and they gave them away since no one was supporting new artists unless they had someone with credentials backing him. And in this case, that someone would have been Luke. Eventually, Rick Ross signed on with Suave House Records, where he said he recorded a lot of music, but there were no plans for him to put out an album. And the same went for many of the other recording artists. He was later approached with the opportunity to sign on with Slip and Slide Records, which was said to be the hottest label in the rap game. So in spite of his reservations, he hesitantly signed on with Slip and Sly Records, where he wrote lyrics for Trina and many other artists, but still had not recorded an album. So when he finally received that call that changed his life, uh, the call that changed the course of his career and received that tune that we all know, 
I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. He said it impacted him immediately. He wrote and added a few more verses to it. Uh, he booked many shows and hustling became his debut single. Shortly afterwards, he became the subject of a bidding war when he received offers from Diddy, Bad Boy Entertainment, and Irv Gotti's Murder, Inc. Records until he signed a million dollar deal with Jay-Z, Def Jam Records. The war was over and later that year, he recorded his debut album, Port of Miami, and the rest is history. Rick Ross discusses the many situations, circumstances, and experiences that he calls the hurricanes in his life. Some of them were dealing with the loss of his father from cancer. Now, he said even though the distance was between them, he always knew that the love was there. He also addresses the rumors that said that he was an undercover cop or confidential informant because he worked as a corrections officer for a short time after dropping out of college. He also discusses his health issues. He had surgeries, he had uh, seizures, um, and he definitely had to make some life changes concerning his health. And he also discusses many other situations and circumstances in his life. If you're interested in knowing more about rapper Rick Ross's life, then you definitely should read the book. Uh, you could purchase the hardback or the paperback book cover. Uh, you could listen to it on Audible. You could purchase, uh, purchase it on Kindle. Um, or you could pick it up from your local library. If you like reading, if you like reading hip hop stories, if you're a Rick Ross fan, you definitely won't be disappointed. So if you have any comments about this book, this story, um, if you have any other suggestions about books that you think that I may be interested in reading, then please comment below and let me know. Well, as always, thank you for watching. Um, have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.